again, my name is Ken Kelzer, Global Vehicle Chief Engineer for Performance Cars. You have to have, to be, to be nimble, you have to be lightweight. You can see the underbody shielding that we have. This shielding was done, obviously, for aero. It was done for drag, as well as from an acoustic standpoint. So we, we paid attention to even around suspension hardware to make sure that uh, we had the correct airflow. You can see how this thing has a look to it also from a diffuser standpoint to get the right aero. If you notice, there's no air dam in the front. So we were able to balance the airflow underneath the vehicle uh, without that. Rear wheel drive differential, which you see here, this is cast iron. And a lot of folks will say, why didn't you use aluminum? The reason we use cast iron is we want to balance fuel economy and performance as well as weight distribution. The goal was to have 50-50 weight distribution, so obviously it helped. But the primary purpose actually of doing this was because of the thermal expansion of cast iron is less than aluminum. And if you use aluminum, you have to have a higher uh, preload on the bearings, which in turn reduce the fuel economy, as well as this is better from a noise standpoint. You can also see we have bolted on the, uh, the drive shafts so that there isn't a spline taking up any slop so that it's an instantaneous connection with the, with the wheel. Uh, from a suspension, this, we're very proud of this. This is the first five-link application in a Cadillac. But what it does is it uh, prevents the squat in a vehicle. It, uh, it'll actually help you from a roll stiffness standpoint. Uh, and from a design, hopefully you can see the, the links. Take a look at these links. We paid attention to the grams on this, not the kilograms. And we would lightweight a part, and then we would even put lightning holes in it. You can see from a load standpoint, for example, where the cradle comes through, and if you have the rear cradle attachment, and how that lines up straight across with the body rail. And you can see that they are straight across with the intention that anything that's offset puts a moment into the vehicle and then you gotta compensate for that someplace else. From a front suspension standpoint, again, you can see the, the lateral members all in line. So you have your handling link right in, front, in, in line with your, uh, your rear, your, the cross member and that is, is so that you don't have to have any loads, but yet from a, from a ride link standpoint, it translates forward, so when you hit the uh, impacts, it's able to soften the blow on the impacts. So, so when people think of lightweight, fun, nimble, I think we're demonstrating how we're doing the lightweight. The other thing is, how do you do brakes, steering, suspension, right? Because those are all the aspects of having it fun to drive. From a steering standpoint, we paid the price to go to ZF, recognized as the industry standard from a steering, but this is also a belt drive system, not a dual pinion, so you have the precision from a belt drive standpoint. Uh, from, a, from, a brakes, from a brake, overall brakes, we've got Brembo brakes, and that does a couple of things. Uh, the 60 to 0, 129 feet, but a Brembo brake is stiff, and what does stiffness give you? It gives you a limited brake fade. This is a rear wheel drive unit, um, if we had the all-wheel drive unit I talk a minute on that's transfer case, we use the gear-driven transfer case. A lot in the industry are using chain. What does that drive? Well, a gear-driven a gear system makes it smaller so that the passenger compartment in the footwell isn't intruded upon. It reacts faster. It is a preemptive system and at the end of the day gives you stability control.